And we are here with Mr. Bell in the Science Laboratory at Kensington Aldridge Academy. Uh, Mr. Bell, tell us what you're going to be doing today. Oh, yeah, 13. So today we're going to run through Required Practical 10. Now, this Required Practical is all about making a pure organic substance. And today we're going to make something called aspirin, which I'm sure you're all aware of. And the process of doing this is by the acylation of salicylic acid. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is weigh out six grams of salicylic acid. Now, to do this, we're going to be using a weighing bone. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously weigh the weighing bone. So it comes to here 1.15 grams. Now, it's really important you make a note of this so you don't obviously forget what the weight and the mass of the weighing bones is. So, let's begin. A good technique here is to take the weighing bones off, the mass balance, and putting the salicylic acid separately. And then let's have a look how much we've got so far. We might be a way off. We've got 1.75, so still a bit way to go. It's an interesting technique, Mr. Bell. Why are you doing it this way? Well, I like to do this, uh, Dr. Davis, just because it helps with spillage. In ah. terms of, I don't want to spill any of the salicylic acid onto the mass balance. And then if that happens, obviously that's mass that's not in this weighing bowl and therefore not going to be counted in the actual reaction. That's a really good bit of advice. Oh, thank you, sir. So it's still a lot way to go. It's a lot more of this. I hope we've got six grams in here. So do I. So do I, Mr. Bell. So 5.7 more. A little bit more. Feel good to so see. Scraping all of this in. One of the key skills of being a chemist is the ability to scrape a solid from the inside of a jar. Yes. It'd be great for the spatula. <laughs> Very handy. So at 6.70, this is including the mass of the weighing boat, which I forgot to tear, but say la vie. And now we have, so I just need to double check that because I've just forgot to so that, 6.70 grams. So that's the mass of the weighing boat and the salicylic acid? Yes, it is. Uh, yes. Okay, lovely. So what's going to happen next? So the next thing that we need to do is to add this salicylic acid to a 100 milliliter conical flask. And the way to do this, the weighing boat is quite nice because you can make it into a shape like this, mm. which is very, very easy to pour. So again, shape like that and carefully place it into the conical flask like this. So saying that the uh, weighing boat almost uh, gives you like a, a natural funnel? It does, sir, uh, yes. It's uh, very handy. Okay. I'll just take your time with this because this is the formula product. Yeah, you don't want to get any, you don't want to spill any at this point, do you? No, because that'd be wasted. Yeah. Um, it would have an effect on your um, yield, wouldn't it? It would, yes. Remember, calculating yield is a key skill. Yeah. It's actually uh, something that we'll be doing later on with this practical. Once we've made our solids, purified it, we'll then be working out the yield that we got from it. Lovely stuff. So, all my salicylic acid there, apart from a bit of the top, is in the conical flask. Now the next thing to do is weigh the conical flask, uh, the weigh the weighing boat again, sorry. Uh, hi, um, Mr. Bell, why are you doing this? Because if you actually, if you can see here, there's some uh, uh, residue of the salicylic acid. Now this might be just due to the static of the weighing boat, uh, which will attract the salicylic acid, salicylic acid, and it means it won't actually go into the conical flask. So we need to find out how much salicylic acid is actually in the conical flask. Ah, That's right. right. Very good. So this comes out at 1.23 grams. So just waiting there to make sure it balances. 
uh, to get an accurate result. So to find out the mass of the salicylic acid, you see there, all we have to do is do the 6.7 grams, which is found here, minus the 1.23 grams, and we will get, try and get my calculator out here, <laughs> very detailed of course. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got 6.7 minus 1.23 is equal to no internet. I think it'll be 5.47. 5.47. See, that's some great maths from Dr. Davis. <laughs> it really isn't. Come on, maths from Mr. So that's how much salicylic acid we have in the colloidal flask at the moment. Now, the next step we have to do is actually to add, one second, sorry, to add the uh, ethanoic anhydride. So I've already um, made this out, and it's 10 centimeters cubed, or 10 milliliters. So what I have to do here is pour this into a flask. Yeah. And the next thing we have to do, we've got sulfuric acid, and we're going to add a couple of drops to the conical flask, and then afterwards we're just going to give it a little stir. Okay. So the um, the the role of the so was it acetic? What kind of anhydride was it? So it was ethanoic anhydride. So so the uh, ethanoic anhydride, that acylating agent. Uh, we could have used ethanol chloride, um, but ethanol. Um, Ethanol anhydride will give us more control over the rate of the reaction because it's a little bit less reactive than the acyl chloride version. So just giving it a little stir now, making sure to be careful. Now, actually, just before I put this into the water, I'm just going to take the, uh, the Bunsen burner off just because it's starting to boil here. And it's really important that this water doesn't exceed 65 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds for this to cool down. And then I'll put it in the um, beaker of water for 20 minutes for the reaction to occur. So why have you got, uh, why have you got the, um, the, the Bunsen burner on a, uh, on a bright yellow flame there? What's the purpose of that? So the purpose of this is just so it's a safety flame let's say, in uh, chemistry. And this is just because, obviously, if you turned it to the hot flame, which is a blue flame here, it's a lot harder to see. Yeah. And also, it's a lot more dangerous because if I accidentally waft my hand there or a bit of paper, it's more easily to catch fire. Okay. So I'm just going to turn back to this. So first of all, I can see it, but also it's uh, a more controlled flame. Okay. Now, hopefully, this should be uh, ready to put in now. So I'm just going to adjust this boss, which is just this apparatus here, and gently place into the water. There we go. So I'm going to leave it like that for 20 minutes, making sure the temperature doesn't exceed 65 degrees Celsius. Of course, use a thermometer for that.